Hello, my name's Rick Caesar. One of the questions my patients most commonly ask me is why, if I have dry eye, is my eye watering? And the reason is that what we as ophthalmologists have called a dry eye is not necessarily an eye that's short of water, but it's an eye that doesn't have enough oil. Hopefully this uh, video and the diagrams will help explain what's going on with dry eye and how best you can treat it. But to understand why your eye waters, you have to first of all understand a little bit about how the eye drains away tears and where the tears are coming from. So imagine now you're, you're looking at here, you're looking at your right eye. So your tear gland lives up underneath your bony brow and that sends tears as a wash onto the surface of your eye in response to a signal coming from the front of your eye, from your cornea, effectively saying, give me some water. That water then flows along your lower eyelid and you can imagine your lower eyelid as being a gutter and of course your upper eyelid and your lower eyelid blink and with each blink that squeezes and squeegees the water towards two little plug holes. There's one in your lower eyelid and one in your upper eyelid. These two plug holes go into two tubes and these two tubes go into your tear sac and your tear sac then goes through a narrow bony canal out into your nose. So under normal happy circumstances, your eye is asking your tear gland to produce some extra water. The water flows along your lower eyelid to your plug hole, down through your tubing called your canaliculus into your tear sac and out into your nose. And normally there's some spare in the system. So if you produce a few extra tears, let's say for example, um, you're out in the cold air, then normally the system and the capacity of the drain is en enough that the tears continue to go into your nose and they don't go over the edge. Now, what we all know is that under certain situations, you simply have too many tears produced. For example, uh, the emotion of crying or riding a bike in a cold wind. And when this happens, the signal going from the front of the eye to your tear gland is simply overloaded. You get additional tears produced. The tears are too much for the drains and over the edge they go. So everybody's eyes have the capacity to water on occasion. But the question then is, if your eyes are watering when they shouldn't be, what could possibly be going wrong? And obviously, there are two very simple overviews. One, you've got a drainage problem. And a drain problem can be started at the top. There could be a problem with your lower eyelid. Your lower eyelid could be hanging off. Your lower eyelid might have other issues. There might be problems with your blink mechanism. The little plug hole can be closed. That's called punctal stenosis. There could be problems with the canaliculi, there can be problems with your tear sac, and there could be problems with the nasolacrimal duct. But loosely, a drainage problem is actually a, a reasonably easy thing to approach because you simply have to find the blockage and try and find a way of unblocking it. The second cause for you to have a watery eye is if you've got a hyper secretion. In other words, for one reason or another, your cornea is sending a signal to your tear gland asking for far too many tears and your drains can't cope. So the next question is why, if you have a dry eye, do you get a hypersecretion? And to understand this, you want to take your eye and turn it into cross section. So imagine that's the front of your eye. And then here we have your lower eyelid 
and your upper eyelid and your eyelash. Now, your, and living behind your eyelash is a little gland called your meibomian gland, and you have pretty much as many of these as you have eyelashes. Now, your tear film is a complex thing. You have three layers. First of all, there's a mucus layer sticking on the front of the cornea. Then there is a water layer, which is coming from your tear gland. And then last of all is an oil layer. Now, these three layers are mixed together and it's not quite as simple as simply considering them as one on top of each other, but you can consider it uh, as such in order to help understand what's going on. So in an ideal world, your cornea, the front of your eye, is being protected by a mucus layer, a water layer, and an oil layer. And all three are absolutely vital. Now, it's possible for your mucus layer to be reduced in extreme circumstances, such as uh, vitamin A deficiency. It's possible for your water layer to be inadequate, uh, for example, Sjögren syndrome, but this is also very rare. The commonest by far is for there to be a problem with your oil layer, and this is what we classically describe as a dry eye. Now, this oil layer comes from this little gland, and this gland is called a meibomian gland. And what this gland should be doing is it should be secreting oil out onto the surface of your eye. Now, when you get meibomian gland dysfunction, this gland thickens stiffens and becomes inflamed and the oil inside the gland starts becoming waxy and thick and it doesn't come out it doesn't get secreted so if you're in this unhappy position what can you do well essentially there are three main components step one replace your missing oil. And in order to replace your missing oil, you simply have to find a preservative-free lubricant drop that suits you. We all have our favorites. I currently really like Hilo Forte. I also like Theolos Duo. But believe it or not, there are overall about 86 different uh, types of lubricant drop available in the chemist. Of course, lots of them overlap, but it's a little bit like trying to find a shampoo that suits you. I could recommend Hyla Forte, I could recommend Theolos Duo, but they may not suit you at all. However, there will be a lubricant drop that suits you. Once you find a drop that soothes your eyes and makes your eyes feel better, you need to replace the missing oil all the time. There is no upper limit. You cannot put too much replacement oil on your eye, and, but you can most certainly put too little on. And most people replace their missing oil and then they start to feel a bit better, so they stop using the drops so much and then the symptoms start to recur. Now, so replacing your missing oil is one thing. You have drops during the day at night it's worth using a thicker ointment. And there's one called Vita Poz. Um, there's another one called Xa Xylin Night. Uh, and they're both worth trying. You have to put them on last thing at night because they're thick. And if you put them on during the day, you won't be able to see so well through them. So step one is to replace your missing oil. Step two is to try to get your own oil flowing. And this is where you want to use a heat pad. And the idea with the heat pad is you are physically putting some heat onto your eyelid in order to try and melt that wax 
back to oil in the meibomian glands. And the best heat pads now by far are the uh, USB uh, electric uh, pads, which you can get on Amazon. And they are uh, controllable and comfortable. Uh, much better than the ones that you simply placed in the microwave because they, 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 you, you've simply got so much more control about the heat, the duration. Um, there are lots and lots of companies making them and I don't know that any single one is better than another but they all, uh, all look very similar and they're all currently retailing at around £19 in the UK. Now, to get your own oil flowing, the other thing you want to add is a tablet called Limacycline. You can also use Doxycycline. And the Limacycline and the Doxycycline, they're part of a group of antibiotics called the Tetracycline antibiotics. But in this circumstance, you're not actually taking them for any antibiotic function. You're taking them because they have an anti-inflammatory function and they have uh, an, an element of, bring about an element of change within the meibomian glands that helps that oil flow. Essentially, you're taking them for the same reason that teenagers take them when they have acne. And unfortunately, you have to take them for the same length of time, typically three to six months. Um, in a sh over the first month that you take them, they unfortunately achieve nothing. But by staying on them for a longer term, uh, in the same way as they help clear teenage acne, they can help improve the function of your meibomian glands. So, so far for your meibomian gland dysfunction, you're replacing your missing oil, you're using some lubricants at night, you're trying to get your own oil flowing with a heat pad and a tetracycline antibiotic. And then the third thing that you may wish to consider is to reduce the surface inflammation. And the reason that this is worth doing is you want to be as comfortable as possible. And one of the problems with dry eye is that the eye is so sore. Now you can reduce the surface inflammation using uh, steroid drops. But these have uh, long-term risks, uh, so you only want to be on them briefly, and you want to be on preservative free drops. Um, and currently there's a very nice drop called Soft Accord that you may wish to consider. But again, you wouldn't want to be on any steroid drop for a prolonged period of time. And the other thing you can use to reduce surface inflammation is a, a newer drop called I. Curvis, which contains cyclosporin. Um, now, Icurvis is uh, an interesting drop. The problem with it is that initially a lot of patients find it stings and therefore they find it difficult to get used to using it. Um, however, there's some evidence that if you take it for a prolonged period of time, that initial stinging can go away and the uh, anti-inflammatory uh, effect then helps. Now, there's another component to dry eye and my bowing gland dysfunction that is also very much worth mentioning and that is good old-fashioned blepharitis. Now blepharitis is an accumulation of debris and predominantly dead skin cells at the base of your eyelashes. Now, when you have blepharitis, the oil that's coming out of your meibomian gland, instead of going onto the surface of your eye, some of that oil kind of does a U-turn and goes back and is soaked up into the little clumps of dead skin cells at the base of your eyelashes. This then causes further inflammation, further irritation, and your eyes are itchy, gritty, sore, dry, watering. So if you have a combination of blepharitis as well as meibomian gland dysfunction, to shift your blepharitis, it's a physical thing, 
and basically you need to clean your eyelashes at the base. Now how you do this really doesn't matter. You can use any proprietary uh, cleaning pads, uh, you can use um, tissues. I personally recommend a cotton bud, um, although preferably one on a wooden stick now that we're aware of the issues with uh, plastics. But all you're trying to do is physically wipe off this debris once or twice a day. And often the easiest thing is uh, if you're a lady, uh, imagine you're removing your mascara. And again, if you're a man, well, imagine you had applied some mascara and you're removing your mascara. It's a simply a wipe of the eyelashes once or twice a day. And again, once you've been doing it for at least a month, you should notice some improvement. The problem is, don't stop. Because if you stop, the blepharitis will come back. Blepharitis is a little bit like uh, weeding your garden. There's no reason why you can't have an absolutely beautiful garden so long as you weed it regularly. So, overall then, if somebody says, why is my eye watering when I have a dry eye? It's because ophthalmologists should never have called it a dry eye. We should have called it an oil deficiency hypersecretion. So it's worth writing that down. What is a dry eye? It's oil deficiency hypersecretion. There you go. Oil deficiency, hypersecretion, and how are you going to get on top of it? Well, it's a long haul. You're not going to do it easily, but you're going to be you're going to win by replacing your missing oil, getting your own oil flowing, reducing your surface inflammation, and clearing up any blepharitis if you have any. <laughs>